Everybody, uh, so here I am uh, back again. Uh, just going to continue on with uh, some sculpts uh, and some development uh, for my project Gladiatron. Uh, so I do have a quite a lot of characters to make uh, for the game, uh, and this is one of them. Uh, he's one of the scientists that helps uh, you upgrade your suit and everything like that, um, and helps you pass the game, uh, and then. Uh, I was working on another one yesterday. So what I'm going to do, uh, one of the things I'll do at least is show how I can kind of create these bodies uh, in 3D Coat pretty quickly um, as a base. Uh, and then you can kind of use that to kind of extend things out further. Um, and last week I was working on this angel character. Uh, I did a few sculpts like this was not this was just kind of like from my head versus uh following that reference drawing that i made uh where is it should be here let's see Yeah, so this is like kind of like loosely inspired by uh, the idea. Um, again, same kind of approach, just kind of mapping out the major forms. Made heavy use of the instance tool um, in 3D Coat. Uh, so you'll see how I'm gonna approach things, but um, but yeah, it's it's just a helpful and wise way to block out each mass separately, uh, so that you can always kind of uh, go in after the fact and move things around. What's going on here? Make sure I have the right thing selected. So you see, uh, keeping the form separate, I can go in and I can kind of like tweak things to my heart's delight. You know, and get the right proportions, relationship, see what I like is in terms of design, I actually kind of like that. Um, Kind of an interesting variation. Uh, I can save this as an alternate uh, file. Save as. Uh, uh, but then, yeah, once you're happy with this, then you kind of merge it all into one uh, sculpt, uh, and then you can kind of sculpt your further details. But this is a kind of like a good first step to kind of mass out your forms. Uh, so I'll show you like a fairly streamlined process uh, for doing that. Uh, let's just show you one more. So this is more so following the reference uh, that I made. So this is basically uh, closer to what I established here. Uh, in the reference so still not fully fully realized but it's kind of the uh, you know the general idea again took advantage of instancing to, to really um, optimize the workflow right so even these legs if I were to change one leg as you'll see it will actually affect the other leg as well Oops, something going on there uh so yeah i think that's a paint issue let's uh i also have set like a whole bunch of hotkeys um i'll talk through some of the hotkeys i've set uh so i think that hopefully will be informative and i'll speak to what i would recommend and suggest um others potentially work with as well. Uh, yeah, so anyways, um, I'm gonna start a new file. Go new, don't save. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a body, uh, like a general body that I can use for multiple characters in the game. Um, I've done this before, but I'll just walk you through my process 
Um, possibly, maybe I'll share what I've done before on like Gumroad or something like that. Um, I don't have a Gumroad store, but um, uh, you know, I made it a few years ago, and I think it's helpful um, as a starting point. But um, yeah, let me know if you want that. I'll, I'll share it um, on Gumroad. Let me know in the comments. But uh, anyways. Let me just check one thing here. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, go new. Uh, I'll just start with a, a base sphere like this. Don't really need this for now. I'll just get rid of that. Uh, and uh, I'm actually going to turn off my camera here uh, just so we can see more of what's going on on the screen. And yeah, so a few hotkeys. What I recommend uh, you do, uh, I set a few hotkeys and I, I strongly recommend you do the same. Uh, so over here in our sculpt tree, we have uh, duplicate. I set that to control J. So to have set a hotkey, you just hover over uh, a field, press the end key, E-N-D on your keyboard and then uh, punch in the keystroke or whatever combination of keys that you want uh, for that high key. So just copied Photoshop here, Control J. Uh, I have a new layer um, for that. I set it to, to Control N for new layer. If I right click on one of my fields, uh, one of my uh, sculpt layers, sculpt object layers, I should say, uh, if I right click on it, I will get all the commands I can, can run. Uh, what I want here is add child so I set that to control shift N um, and I might actually change this I might set this to control N so set that to control N um, I'll set new layer to shift N I had that for something else. Yeah, no, shift N is fine. So uh, for the, create a new layer, I'll keep it the, I think Photoshop is control shift N. I'll use that, control shift N. Uh, so control N will make a new child layer. Okay, here. Okay, so I can make a series of children um, of that uh, initial layer. Uh, control shift N will just make a new sibling layer, a regular sibling layer. Control or shift N here, uh, which is, uh, I believe, create space where the identical density and transformation is important if you want to use copy tool without losing quality. Uh, so I set that to shift N. So basically, if I have a high density sculpt layer and I want to duplicate it, I'll press shift N here or hit this uh, icon. Or if I have a low density sculpt layer and I want to uh, or sculpt object, and I want to duplicate that, then I would, I would basically do the same. All right, so anyways, the other thing I set a hotkey for is the sphere tool in voxel mode. So the sphere tool, I set that to shift S. Okay, shift S, all right, so again, hover over it and then choose whatever hotkey you want. I chose shift S. The other ones you want, uh, if we go down, two of them are stacked and this was actually causing me a little bit of a problem, but um, the instancer tool and the transform tool. So the transform tool, uh, I said the hotkey control T for that. Uh, and then for the instancer tool, instant instancer tool, I set that to I. Okay, so when I hit I, uh, it will transfer to that tool. And then within that tool, I want, um, which one was it? So new, new mirror on the X axis. So I set that for my purposes, doesn't matter what he said to, I set it to control shift Q. Uh, I suggest maybe doing something similar um, or any hotkey. Um, uh, and you'll see why that comes in handy a little bit later. And then last but not least, this is what I've always used. Uh, resample, I have a hotkey for that, control shift R. Uh, so I can quickly uh, up res or down res a sculpt object and then smooth all. Uh, I've set that to control shift S uh, so I can quickly smooth things out. So that's that's basically the main tools that I use in my workflow. Um, one other one, I guess that's kind of important, uh, is in geometry, 
we have this tool called sim copy which was basically if you have an asymmetrical mesh um, and you want to uh, make it symmetrical it will take from the, the side of the sculpt that you sculpted on last and then copy that over to the uh, it will delete the other side and copy what you had on that one side to the next side uh, so that's another one that I will uh, potentially work with um, yeah and one last one I guess is uh, increase resolution so I use increase resolution uh, control uh, plus is what I've set the hotkey to control pass plus on the numpad all right, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna hit the Shift S here to get my sphere tool. I'm just gonna press S, make sure uh, symmetry is on. Uh, and then I will just basically start uh, making a sculpt. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the trunk of a character first. Oh, I also set a hotkey here. You can set this to F2, which is pretty standard, but I also, if you right click on your sculpt tree, uh, I set rename. So if I hit the R key, it's gonna rename the layer. So I can quickly just uh, set this to chest for example right so uh, as i create these new layers i can i can uh, do that i'm gonna hit control n here and it's gonna make a child layer as you've seen uh, as you'll see there and i'll just make this like a neck so again using the sphere tool okay i'll press control n again and this will make another child layer i'll make this a head uh, so what i'm doing here i'm not really worried too too much about the shape of things yet i'm just worried more worried about kind of separating things out uh onto different layers i'll go back up to my chest i think what would be nice as well um that i've found is this a way to step up and down through layers using the arrow keys um but uh yeah that's a feature request i believe i don't know if that uh, feature uh, currently exists uh, i'll press Control n here off the chest i'll make a kind of like a hip or abdomen, I can make one more. Uh, this will be the hip. And then, yeah, so there we good. There we're good. Uh, so we have this as our hip. Uh, I'll press Control N one more time. Uh, turn off symmetry. Okay, I'm gonna start the leg chain. Okay, so this will be an upper leg. Can start drawing a little bit of it in. So again, I'm not worried about the proportions or anything like that right now. I'm just mapping out like a structure and I, I wanted to find a quick way to do it. Press control N here again, turn off symmetry uh, and then start uh, the arm or the shoulder. Just kind of get the rest of the arm. Okay, so I'm just hitting control N each time here and then throwing down like a blob for uh, a placeholder blob for each successive part. I'm going to press H here on the leg. M. Oh, so I think that's one hotkey I didn't mention, but M. Uh, we want to set a hotkey for move. I just set it to M. Super handy. Uh, Alright. If you're using 3D Coat, uh, the beta for 2021, uh, you'll find that by default, the... Uh, uh, where is it? edit uh, we have these new options so you can kind of like blender you can move without using a gizmo so you hit a cock key and it's like a live movement and then you confirm with left click or pencil with right click um, however uh, some of the hotkeys have already been assigned to this in blender 2021 uh, and m which i have typically used for move has been kind of assigned to move to pick point and i found that a little bit a uh, little jarring so anyways i, I hovered over a field you can press uh backspace over hovering over a field and that'll clear out whatever key, key uh, is set um, so anyways that's what I did there um, all right so with this selected H um, I will press control N to make a new layer oops shift S get our sphere tool get our foreleg in there uh, let's just set two here to make sure I'm looking at this from the front uh, and then I'll press control N one more time and then get a blob here for the foot yeah, so anyways, this is like, or, or, this doesn't look like much, but this is the start of our character. Uh, so now I'm gonna go in with the move tool. Uh, so cool thing about 3D code, you can just hover over uh, an object and press H, and it will, um, it will be selected. If you're brand new to 3D code and you haven't, um, not familiar with it, uh, auto pick is something you may want to turn off up top. Uh, auto pick will automatically pick up whatever uh, you're sculpting on uh, it may be helpful in some cases but in, in my experience I found it like a little bit more uh, difficult to control um, everything so I usually turn that off all right 
Um, one thing I, I would say, I love 3D Coat. Uh, one thing I would say is like, uh, I think some of the default values and settings probably uh, sh could be more tuned like to, to settings that, you know, more people would probably find useful. But yeah, that's my opinion. It could be that auto pick is better for most people and you know for my particular use cases it's it's less less so but i i suspect that may not be the case i think that's something you should should be off by default anyways um so here i am so i'm just sculpting now uh i use control shift r okay which is my hotkey for resample and i'll i like to work with forms around a thousand uh triangles and then I'll hit Control Shift S, which will allow me to uh, iteratively smooth the uh, the form. It works really nicely uh, on uh, low low uh, poly objects, so that's why uh, I like to kind of reduce the poly count on the different forms uh, and work with like different forms in this way. There is actually a couple more hotkeys that I suggest. If you right click over an object, uh, you'll have extrude as well. Uh, so I set that to control E. Uh, and basically what that does, that allows you to do a, a negative or positive extrusion. Um, positive by default, but you can throw in a negative value there. Uh, and you'll see what that does. That'll allow me to kind of bulge out a form like so. Uh, and then you can kind of smooth it from there. So this is a, a workflow that I use quite quite a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, other couple of settings that I have here uh, that aren't default. Um, uh, is that I have in geometry. Uh, don't have to do this, but I turn use CUDA on and CUDA smooth burst boost on and then cast shadows. Without cast shadows, you'll see that it's harder to read the form, especially if I'm using like a PBR shader. Um, so I like to leave cast shadow on. Barring that, if I'm not using uh, cast shadows, I'll make sure that I work with a matte cap shader versus a PBR shader that uh, responds accurately to the light. Um, so I have a matte cap shader here somewhere. I think it's this one. So yeah, barring if I'm not using um, if I'm not using cast shadows, I'm making sure that I use that. And in their shaders, you can right click on it and you can do things like apply to visible. Right, so everything will appear like that. Uh, and then another important option here is um, set as default shader. So basically, when something is set as the default shader. Every time I create a new layer and then create a new sculpt object, uh, it will uh, by default uh, take on those shaders, uh, that shader's appearance. All right, so anyways, I'm gonna go back to what I had before. Apply it to visible, turn cast shadows on. All right, so, uh, so yeah, what I'm gonna do now is just map out the body. Some of these layers have symmetry on. Uh, looks like it's not on this one. Let's make sure it's on. I don't like to show symmetry plane, so I usually turn that off. All right, so anything that's on the trunk, I'll have symmetry on, but if it's a leg or an arm or something like that, um, arms usually are okay with symmetry, but for legs, I find that, especially when you get to like the center, um, symmetry starts to act funny. Uh, so it's hard to kind of get things uh, working in the middle. Uh, so I, I'd rather instance it. So that's kind of the next thing uh, you'll see me do uh, in a moment. Um, actually, I think I'm probably ready now uh, just because I have everything mapped out. I think I'd like to name things and I'll probably set the transform position of everything as well. Uh, and you'll see the advantages of that. Also, let's resample down. So when we resample down, we get like a nice kind of smooth optimized form, but we will ultimately have to re uh, increase the red so I do that by pressing control plus or hitting the um, increase resolution key there you can also hover over any part of your object and touch uh, F on your key keyboard and that'll uh, make that the pivot point uh, so like if you're working on the toe you can easily kind of focus in on that particular area and uh, go like that So 
so leave that as like just a basic placeholder what i'll do with the foot usually and i'm not super duper happy with the way the foot's appearance is yet but usually i'll map it out block it out um, as generally as possible all right not really worried about the bottom um, you'll see why in a second And again, this is just me kind of in the approaches that I've kind of found effective working in 3D code. I, I know that, uh, you know, almost, I would say probably, I don't know, giant percentage of people who do digital sculpting are using um, usually ZBrush, a lot use the Blender. Uh, a lot of people do hard surface sculpts in 3D code, but I found not as many people do characters or organic stuff. Um, but I uh, found uh, some some approaches that I that I find really helpful, especially early stage sculpts. All right, so there we go. So we have a basic foot. I'm gonna hit uh, F5. I'm sorry, five on the numpad, and then two on my numpad to go into orthographic mode, and then uh, make sure I'm in the front view of the orthographic mode. I also have a hotkey here for cutoff, so that is Shift C. That's what I've set. Uh, and then we do have these different uh, draw modes. So when you have any tool, you can press the E key and that'll bring up the E panel, which will give you the different draw modes. I'm just using this uh, box marquee select mode. And you see I can kind of from the front view, I can just easily kind of chop off the uh, bottom of the foot there. And I'll just select this to make sure that nothing in that is poking through. Come back to this. Uh, go back into my move tool, check uh, my resolution, see if it's sufficient, and I'll just control S or control shift S smooth a few times to get uh, a more appropriate foot pose. Uh, I might even extrude this a little bit just to, um, oops, that's probably a little bit too much. Uh, Sometimes what I find after an extrusion, you have to do a slight move or a slight resample. Otherwise, it will not maintain the, uh, the extrusion. It doesn't uh, commit. So it's there optically, but it's not for whatever reason. Uh, this doesn't stay permanent. Uh, so M here, just move this in. All right, continue to kind of get the narrower part of the back of the foot. Uh, and ultimately, I probably want to go in with like sculpting brushes to really get the, the form right, but I'll get as far as I can with the move tool. And that should be good. Uh, I will just have to kind of go back in, shift C, and just slice off the bottom one more time. And then run a few smooth holes. And then uh, up res slightly so I get a more controlled version of that form. Okay, I probably have to move this foot later on, but uh, nice thing is. Because of the way I've set up this hierarchy, right, um, and that is a child of the shin, and the shin is a child of the thigh. If I press Control T and move this, you'll see that the whole chain kind of goes with it. So, uh, so that is helpful. All right, so here, let's try to shape this foreleg a little bit. Again, primarily using the Move tool. Um, you can hover over something and press G as well. Let's increase the resolution, that's very low. Uh, I may have to extrude this slightly. So this is how I, uh, I get smooth forms in 3D code. Like I know um, some people don't want it, but for me, it's always been a goal, right? So like this is how, uh, if you start this way, and I've shown some other methods like using the pinch tool, and but I think this is a, a piece that is always a component of, uh, of my workflow, uh, working with simpler versions of shapes and then kind of gradually up them. 
you know, or smoothing them at uh, when they're low res, and then increasing the resolution uh, as I hone in on the uh, final shape. Uh, another feature request uh, is I would love to have a repeat last command. Uh, so if I run an extrusion um, and it's minor, it's subtle, I could kind of keep spamming that button, uh, repeat extrusion, or maybe an option for extrusion to, to kind of do some, something similar to what I do with the smooth all tool where you can uh, basically have it um, work incre incrementally. Instead of having a punch in the value every time. All right, so again, just kind of um, getting that shin shape. Uh, go here for the thigh, go to a side view. I think what I'm going to do as I'm going through this process, I'm just going to bring up a reference because I want this uh, to be like a reusable body shape for all the characters, at least. I'll say maybe uh, I'll make a male and female version, I guess, but uh, as many of the body shapes uh, that I can use for like NPCs in the game, uh, I'd love to have, and then I can just kind of swap in and out different uh, heads um, and you know adjust proportions accordingly. Uh, I think that would make the whole process a lot more manageable. Uh, so. So there's our leg. We don't have a kneecap or anything like that, but we probably don't need one because our character will have clothes. You won't really see it. Let's start naming these things. So press R here and I'll call this uh, thigh. Uh, and if you're just joining, I did, um, I set a hotkey for rename, so that's why I'm able to just do it um, the way I'm doing it here. Um, So I can work quickly. Uh, go here. We'll call this uh, R. Yep. By the way, you can also just double click on a layer and easily rename it that way as well. Oops. Okay. Careful when you click on a layer. There's a bunch of different uh, selectable options on these layers. So if you press the V, something will happen. If you press the eyeball, something will happen. If you press the uh, this guy, something will happen. It'll ghost it. The V will switch from uh, voxel mode to surface mode. This will uh, down res the layer like in, um, in a temporary state uh, and in a non-destructive way. This is where you can kind of just select it and just click the name. This is to move it around and this is to add a child. Um, so there's quite a few options on each layer, but, um, but yeah. So just be mindful of where you select. Uh, and I'll call this, I think this was, Call this abdomen. Uh, we'll call this one head. This will be. And we have chest there. Uh, do I have a shoulder? Yeah, so this is my shoulder chain. So this will be shoulder. This will be arm. This will be, this feels like rigging. Uh, this will be uh, four, uh, four arm. And this will be hand. All right, so here we are. Uh, so I'm gonna select this here and just down res, go to about a thousand or sub 1000, not too low, cause I don't want it to degrade too much. Right, when it's around a thousand, it's easy to work with it when I smooth all. It's also easy to move. Uh, so the goal again, just to reiterate, the reason I down res things is to keep things at manageable poly counts um, for as long as possible. Uh, and then once I'm happy with a shape of something, I'll start kind of uh, pressing control plus there to increase the resolution. Control plus is not a hotkey by default. It's one that I set to increase resolution. So. You can use a hotkey or you can do it manually, it's up to you. Uh, let's get this part, uh, let's down res it. 
So uh, one of the things I'm going to definitely do, especially as uh, this version of 3D Code starts getting out of beta, is I'm going to start uh, making uh, scripts, simple scripts uh, for some of the functions that I use a lot. So like down res four times, I'll set that to a, a, a hotkey, right? So I can basically just um, do that really quickly. I probably can already do it. But uh, I'll make a script that does that, and I'll assign a hotkey to that script, uh, and then that will further speed up this process. Let's get this one chest. Down res, oops, down res. Okay, feel free uh, to use your cutoff tools and everything like that. Uh, let's just turn off show symmetry. I just find it distracting. So symmetry, I can keep symmetry on. S again to, to bring up your symmetry options. Uh, you can keep symmetry on. I just uh, like to So just getting a, a better torso shape here. Um, neat thing about cutoff is set it to work across multiple layers. I won't do that right now. It's, it's going to be a little bit dangerous if I do, but. So this stage is, is really just this shifting forms around and getting a feel for the silhouette. Uh, and that's basically it, uh, getting things lined up. So I'm gonna have to move this leg chain in a little bit. Uh, so let's select here, press Control T. I'm gonna set the transform here, uh, reset axis, is that it? Um, to main axis. Just move along the global X axis there to bring it into alignment properly. I can hold shift, move this up, and uh, set this to scale. Just scale the whole uh, leg chain down slightly uh, so it's not proportion wise, it's not. Uh, out of whack. All right, cool. Uh, so let's come back here, uh, go into our move tool, uh, just smooth that ever so slightly. And control plus. Control, hold down control with the move tool to move along the surface normal uh, so you can kind of easily poke things in. All right, so I think that is uh, it's good. Uh, so with everything named properly now, uh, I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna put the pivot points where I want them to be. It doesn't seem like it's quite aligned vertically properly. Our to main axis, reset axis, okay, there we go. Uh, and put that pivot point, you know, where you would imagine, again, think of rigging, like if you wanted to rotate this hip, where would that articulate with the pelvis? Uh, maybe somewhere around here. Uh, and then I can switch to the instancer tool. Again, I have a hotkey for that. I press I, and then I press the control shift Q, which is my hotkey for uh, make a um, an instance on the uh, X axis. So now you see I can basically make changes here, right? kind of poke through and, and I can kind of get some interesting results. But these are definitely uh, separate. You can control, rotate, or move this. Um, sorry, rotate. Uh, okay, so something happened here. 
Yeah, so what happened is, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but this ended up becoming a child of this, instead of being a sibling. So that, uh, that's that got to be something with, uh, I might have chosen the wrong um, option for instancing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I should be able to basically move each of these independently. Like so, right? And while we're maintaining the... Um, that relationship right so anyways that is uh, that's how I'll generally approach things uh, I'll back up back up back up uh, right and I want to set the pivots for everything um, you can stay square to the world if you want you can align your axis to the limb as well uh, it's up to you it's no right or wrong but uh, if you're thinking about, you know, doing a posed sculpt, this is kind of like a an approach that will be uh, helpful later on. All right, so uh, you could consider other things like breaking the foot into two pieces. For my purposes, that, that won't be necessary. I'll go here. That's probably okay. Here. Um, just put the pivot lower. Maybe find out, think about where the spine would be. Uh, and in terms of the hierarchy, uh, as I remember, oops. Oh, by the way, I'm moving the gizmo by holding down the shift key uh, while moving it. When you do that, it only moves the gizmo. I forgot about that. Okay, so. Just position, so everything's named appropriately, but let's just also put the pivot points for things in the right spot. Uh, I will fix up these arms before I uh, think about instancing instancing them. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick do a quick experiment here. If I select this and I press Control Shift Q, yeah, it becomes a child. Let me just check new mirrored instance. Oh, instance is child, so I have that checked. I don't want that checked. That's all it is. Uh, there we go. So now they are basically siblings. There we go. Yeah, that's that's all I needed to do. All right, so my legs are set. Uh, naming is fine. Uh, if you want to, I mean, I think the inst uh, zero zero, I think that's underscore inst zero zero might be necessary uh, for 3D code to track the fact that it's instanced. Uh, and if I change that, I don't know if that breaks that um, relationship or not. So uh, better to just keep it. So long as you've named the first chain um, what it needs to be, uh, you can should be able to understand what the other side uh, is going to be as well. All right, so let's work on the arm here. Again, we're going to go in with our move tool. Sometimes we want to ghost adjacent uh, forms. Uh, we do that just by hovering over them and pressing G. Again, really nice that we can do that without actually having to manually switch to that uh, layer. To do it, you can just hover over it. I think that's really awesome. Big uh, workflow uh, speed boost. Okay. All right. Let's ghost this. Ghost this back in. Okay. So this arm, I'm definitely gonna have to kind of uh, work into. Uh, it's too long. It's too thick. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna thin it out. Uh, do a simple extrusion. So again, at any stage prior to me merging this, I can uh, continue to tweak it, play with these uh, 
proportions and you can go as like <clears throat> fine-tuned as detailed as you want you could have like each muscle kind of as a separate layer right it's up to you uh, how you approach this um, or each major muscle group and you could separate into a layer it's, it's uh, totally flexible All right, so let's get this form again way too big Again, nice thing about working in voxels here, I never have to worry about polygon stretching. Uh, it uh, basically will revoxelize everything, so long as I have voxelize immediately turned on and move in the move tool. Again, I'm gonna hover over here, hit the F key, so that now when I tumble, uh, that stays centered. <laughs> I do also have a, uh, a 3D mouse, which actually has a kind of a cool function, um, which is new. If I hit the N key in 3D coat, you see I can actually move a, a layer, like so. Uh, I'm not great with the 3D mouse and whoops. That. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. I just, uh, it's not part of my muscle memory yet. So um, I'm just gonna do the old-fashioned way. Great book for uh, anatomy is um, it's on my bookshelf here. What is it? Uh, I can never see it. It's I think it's anatomy for sculptors. You probably can't hear me. I'm turned around. Uh, anatomy for sculptors. Trying to find it on my bookshelf, I don't see it. But basically, that is a uh, really, really good book. Uh, came out recently after I finished school, of course. Um, but it is a beautiful resource you know, for uh, anyone who's interested in drawing, digital painting, character creation, or creature creation. Um, or, of course, sculptors. It's really valuable for, for sculptors. Right, I'm just going to press Control T and move this. Recommendation in uh, 3D Coat. If you're transforming things, I recommend you can rotate it you can scale it but if you're scaling it you scale it uniformly uh, don't kind of like scale it on one axis because that will mess up your uh, that will mess up your so looking at it from the top view here it'll just mess up your uh, your space so if you're familiar with 3d at all um, you can basically make a your it basically transforms the 3D space of the uh, of the layer, so it'll be uh, potentially like oblong or or something. It gives you gives you weird results. If you're not, uh, if that's not what you're expecting. So I'm doing I'm just basically kind of finding the base of a hand here <clears throat> like so uh, and then what I'll do is I'll make a child of this control N and uh, shift S to get my sphere tool just make it small and then just put a blob there. Make maybe a slightly bigger blob. And I'll move, turn this into a thumb. If 
be mindful when in voxel mode if you add if you increase resolution sometimes it shrinks things just a little bit more um, so keep that in mind if you are going to do a res plus right increase resolution operation that you have sufficient uh, thickness to your form otherwise it will disappear it's almost running a, another smooth all operation sometimes so just keep that in mind Uh, thumb. I'll have to definitely tweak the proportions on this. Skip down a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then call this a uh, thumb. Oops, what did I do there? back up to the hand uh, and just press Control N to make another child layer. Uh, Shift S to bring in our sphere tool. Make another one. This will be a finger and I'll call this finger. Uh, it's not renaming. Weird. Strange. Oops. Uh, move tool, not sphere. the finger however you want. I have a few different methods that I kind of go to uh, depending on how precise I want to be. But uh, just trying to get that general shape. So the main thing I'll go into the top view here, just increase the resolution just a little bit. Going with my cutoff tool and just better Define silhouette. that and then I could do the same thing from the front side this is nice because it gives you you know a bit of that blockiness that exists in a finger um, I start and again I do this with the understanding that I'm gonna kind of do a smooth all after the fact. Uh, I think that looks pretty okay. Uh, proportion wise, it's, it's too small relative to the thumb. Let's get our, let's get it here. And of course you can break this up as much as you want. You can break it up into uh, each of the different ph phalanges, right? So the, the first one, um, I think it's proximal, medial, and distal, or something like that. Anyways, uh, 
maybe just slightly adjust the size and position of that finger. Okay, and then I'll press Control J to duplicate it. Scale it up slightly to get that uh, middle finger. Control J again. So let's scale it down slightly. Control J one more time. Set it further back and make it smaller. For the pinky finger, and I'll also just push this one slightly down. Select this one, push one slightly down as well. Uh, select the middle finger and just lift that uh, slightly. Um, I'm gonna see if I can move all of them simultaneously. I can, so I can select multiple. Let's go back to the first one. <clears throat> Let's tuck that in a little bit better. Uh, and you know what would have been smarter, and I just realized this now, if I had made these instances. And so instead of like just making regular uh, duplicates, uh, instances would have been better because any change I make to the one would. Uh, or to apply to the next one. So lesson learned for future. Um, if I remember, I'll do that next time. Let's just tweak the base of the hand so that it works properly. So that's uh, that's good enough as a base, you know, uh, to work with for a hand. Uh, sort of except for the thumb, let's uh, make that smaller. Uh, thumb should, tip of the thumb should line up with the middle knuckle here. So that should give me some insights on how big to make it, and then the. here as well. So let's get that going also. And just increase the resolution a little bit. So that's my basic hand. Not perfect, but decent. Uh, it'll it'll do the trick. Um, let's get the wrist to a hand relationship working better. Forearm, I should say, forearm to hand. Basically, let's fix the wrist. So after I make changes uh, like that, I'll generally kind of go in with the smooth all to to help things sit more nicely and uh, get smoother forms. You can kind of get these bones indicated here as well, uh, maybe less on the thumb side than the pinky side. But again, ref reference is always kind of your friend here. Uh, 
it's just a little too round the upper arm is usually a little flatter so with the bicep in the front and the tricep in the back you can smooth very slightly smooth and move all right let's bring these back All right, so that's a basic person. Let's put the pivot points all in the right spot. Control T, uh, make sure that we're happy with this. Again, shift and move. Uh, oops, H, hold shift and move the gizmo. that axis here. I think I set the pivot point for that at the beginning, so I'm all good there. Let's just like this. Let's just put this here. Uh, set this to rotate and hold shift. Just align it with the thumb. All right, so I'm gonna save this. Uh, well, first I'll duplicate this over. So I'm gonna save it in a way that I can uh, basically bring it into future projects uh, easily. Well, basically all I have to do is save it and I can bring it as a project, uh, as a 3B, so I don't have to really do anything special, but uh, I'll just make sure that there's no other extra stuff in the project uh, when I do that. All right, so let's just fix the uh, deltoid here and we may uh, speak to some of the other anatomy again probably not necessary for my purposes here but um, let's it will be helpful like with the way the clothes sit uh, on the form and, and things like that so it may be worthwhile to do, uh, but I think that looks pretty good for the most part. Um, what I would add, like the big things I would add would be like a scapula and um, pectoralis kind of muscle uh, group. Uh, that's easy to do when I just do it. So on chest, I'll make a child layer. I'll call it, um, I will call it chest uh, pectorals. Uh, and for this, I could uh, approach it a couple of different ways. I could turn off symmetry. And get my sphere tool. Just make a blob to start with. And I'm going to move that round right to represent a pectoral muscle wow. <clears throat> like so so nothing crazy nothing not, nothing perfect or anything like that but gives you the general idea uh, and then if I'm in my instance or tool I can press control shift Q to get my instanced version of that uh, and as I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea for this pec to be part of that uh, arm chain but uh, I'll just leave it as part of the, the chest um, so again can easily make these uh, changes now that uh, are mirrored across the form. All right, uh, lats probably would also be a good one, right, to have at the back, but um, I think for our purposes, we should be, for the most part, okay. Again, proportions here aren't like, are realistic or anything like that um, but 
good enough. Uh, and what else am I doing? So let's just adjust this a little bit. All right, usually there's a bit of, of a cavity uh, in between the trapezius at the back and the uh, kind of the uh, pecs in the front and the deltoid on the uh, shoulders. And then the neck emerges from that uh, cavity. Of course, the neck will be much slimmer than what I have here. Ghost some of these forms. So that I can work with the neck without worrying. Uh, and the spine has this kind of S shape, right? And the lumbar spine is like curved forward, and then it curves back through the, uh, through the upper back and then curves back forward through the neck. So that's kind of what I'm trying to establish here. <laughs> get that head in so the head is a placeholder right so that is something the head is basically something that will uh, uh, be customized per project that I basically bring this body into so I don't really need to do a ton with the head um, it would be bad to have like a solid base for a head in cases where I did need it um, but uh, for now I think we should be Kind of okay and I'll have to figure out like the head to body ratio and proportions uh, you know how kind of how in the realm of realism does this live or you know how cartoony does it become uh, all those things I think stylistically body is a little bit but the game I'm working on is a little cartoony so Bigger heads, smaller bodies, less realism, less realistic anatomy on the bodies is, is usually probably where to go. Uh, all right, proportion wise, I think I'm okay. The legs are probably a little on the big side. Um, easiest way to fix that is going to be to kind of transform the hip. Uh, so I'll just go to scale mode on the hip, scale the legs down. <coughs> up and then I'll go back into the hips after and just adjust any size issues that uh, may have resulted from that uh, size or from the scaling So once everything is mainly mostly in place, then I can kind of start uh, getting more specific. Uh, this pex is too bulgy at the top, so let's bring that in as well. A little flatter to form. I don't think that works. This guy's not a it's supposed to be like a giant bodybuilder guy or anything like that. So. That is a uh, pretty solid. Uh, let's select this uh, shoulder here, and I'm going to uh, just mirror that, or instance, re-instance that to the other side as well. Uh, back up, actually. Let's just scale this all down slightly as well, just so that it's not super duper long arms. Uh, we can kind of look at certain things. Oops, I see what happened now before I accidentally press that. If I were to rotate this down, the fingertip should go to approximately mid-thigh. Yeah, so 
finger should be good. Elbow should be approximate at the belly button. Uh, we're, it's not like exact, exact, but I mean, close enough. Um, and I would want to think of where is that uh, humerus bone? Where does that articulate with your scapula? And where does that uh, rotation come from? I'm going to say about there. I think that puts me in a decent dish spot. Yeah, elbow kind of aligns with the navel. Um, fingertips align with mid thigh. Yeah, no, that, I think that's good. All right, cool. So uh, let me. Head is probably too big. Another cool thing we do, if you want to go like more realistic, you can go to view. Uh, you can show 2D, 2D grid. <laughs> and then um, you can adjust the grid size. I can get a head, a cell to line up with the uh, head, like so. And then you can count your body measurements. So for eight head tall, I care to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so this is, the head is too big um, for like a realistic character, but that's fine. I'm not trying to go for something realistic, but um, yeah, you're probably gonna be looking at seven and a half heads or eight heads uh, for your character, but yeah. View, uh, I think you can do control semicolon. No, control apostrophe, just like in Photoshop to turn off your, turn on and off your grid. So with my shoulder again selected here, I'm just gonna press control shift Q, which is my hotkey for instance. Um, make an instance uh, yeah and that's that's my basic uh, body uh, you know you can go as far as you want with this and you can add details for like hair and uh, or sorry um, you can do hair too I guess and like uh, facial features ears uh, lips nose eyelids eyeballs and on and on um, but for now I think this will work for me so what I'm gonna do is uh, save this file Save as characters. Call it uh, base body sculpt. That's a weird error that I've been getting. So uh, just save incrementally and it should work. All right. I like to always see what this stuff looks like rendered. I have some light. Sets uh, that I've saved. Rib cage is a little bulky, I think, at the top, um, but it's okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so the idea is now uh, I have a bunch of faces. Uh, now I can use this body with those faces, at least as a starting point. Um, I'll still have to worry about things like clothes, but uh, but yeah, now this will work the file. Save that. Cool. Uh, all right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'll open one of those other characters that needs a body. Sculpt, sculpt tab. Just see what I have here. So I have eyebrows, ears separate, hair separate, eyes separate, neck already, and body. So body I'll hide. Uh, 
this was neck. So what I'm going to do, I'll just make uh, these children of the head. Oh, I can't do that. And the neck will be separate probably goes to the neck too. Uh, and what I'll do, right click here, how do I do this? Go with the right click, import uh, 3B file. I'll just navigate to the base body. Because everything is a child of the chest, I should be able to just scale the chest or move the chest around and I'm not sure where that head is. have uh, some scaling issues here easy enough to fix um, I'll just scale the head move it down scale it and again this just works because of the hierarchy that I have the parenting uh, relationship That actually works kind of okay. Um, uh, I have to maybe see what to do about the neck and maybe clean up some of this. Uh, and ultimately, what I do is, of course, um, if happy with the body relative to the head and you know all that kind of stuff, I'll bake or I'll merge it all into one one layer and then uh, sculpt on it uh, for the specific requirements of that particular character. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll just go to sculpt here and I'll press, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to uh, press B here, uh, bring up my reference, go for image, yeah, let's choose a different image. Scientists. As you can see, their proportions here are drastically different uh, than what I've got established here. But um, uh, so I can kind of just slim out some of these forms and kind of go uh, that way 
Um, or I can say, you know what, let's go with the, uh, the more the athletic version of this character, you know. Um, let's, let's see. I think I will uh, turn the head off. Or ghost the head. Ghost, ghost, ghost. And going for my move tool, I can. First thing I want to do is just get the overall proportions as consistent as I can. Not much of a neck there. Head is almost as wide as the body. Legs. Arms a bit slimmer. Know what I have here. You know, and as I'm doing it, you know, I think it doesn't necessarily work. So I'm open. I've, I've, I can. I'm allowed to say this yes or no. You know, to to whether or not I'm going to do it this way. Uh, so I think something more along these lines in terms of uh, proportions will work. Uh, probably still a little too on the muscular side. Um, so I'll go with my move tool. Uh, I will also save this incrementally file. Uh, save incrementally. Uh, and with the move tool I can turn through all volumes on. So anything that's not ghosted should move. Uncheck topological move because that's weird. Oh, I think I know what's going on. So through all volumes must not it must not agree with some of this instance stuff. Uh, that's my guess here. Um, just fine. Uh, just move things individually. So for this, I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to use uh, the pose tool. Uh, for that, I like to set the hotkey of Y for whatever reason. No specific reason, but I have a hotkey for it. Uh, the pose tool, where is it? Um, there we go. Okay, and then I'll hit select objects. Again, through all volumes, I'll turn that on for this. Select each of these three. possible that whatever changes I make here I want to use for the other characters too so I'll show you a way we can export this after the fact as well um, elongate the legs slightly of course that will elongate the feet 
as well. So I might have to go back and rework the rework the feet. Um, body is probably a little too deep uh, front to back, uh, so I have to adjust that as well. Let's move these legs back in preparation for what I'll be doing with the rest of the body. Um, I think that should be good. I could probably maybe tweak this just a little bit more. Pull D. Reset axis. Go a little thinner on the legs. here is just kind of re-flatten the feet so they're not super tall. Those heels are pretty kind of jutty as well, make jet out. Jetty is not a word, I don't think, but uh, get what I mean. Where did it go? D here. Uh, uncheck through all volumes. I'm going to go to uh, line mode for the pose. Let's drag a line here uh, front about midfoot to the back and then I'll just uh, scale it down like so. <coughs> Press 1 on my numpad to go to a bottom view. Go for my move tool and just tweak the position of that heel. the arms probably a little bit more I can do here with the uh, chest body yeah so we're gonna make it not so deep
So transformation uh, is not carried across uh, instances because it's at the uh, object level. Uh, so let's uh, go in with our pose tool again. Uh, select object, that, select everything in this uh, throughout volumes. Select, shift select. As you can see here, the arms are going about to the to the waist or to the yeah, just below the hips, right? So slightly different than what I had uh, established. Again, not that I have to stay married to the design, but. Alright, so I think that is much, much closer uh, to what I had in mind, uh, but again, having that base body really, really helped because I'm not authoring necessarily things from scratch, I'm just editing you know, what I already had. Uh, so the hope is that this will kind of uh, speed up my pipeline, my process here as I have to make a bunch of characters. Uh, I've done this before, but you know what, it doesn't take too long, so uh, might as well go through the process again. And uh, maybe help some other people who are wondering about how to uh, make characters in this program. All right, so, so there we go. Let's bring some of this stuff back. And, cool, so we have the body. Uh, I'll have to play with the relative position of the body versus the head, like it feels a little too forward. The body, I should say, relative to the head. That's where's my chest, there we go. So I'll have to figure out what that uh, all looks like, um, how deep the head's going to be. Because uh, it looks okay from the front, but if it looks weird from the side, I kind of have a problem. So i got to work all that out. Um, and that might just be a head thing here, like going with the move tool. Um, tweaking this all. Interesting how the shadows look hatched like that. I don't know if that's deliberate, but it looks cool. Um, all right, cool, cool. So, so there's that, and then I have to do with clothes. Uh, clothes, bow tie, vest, undershirt, and what does the other one need? Shirt. So probably need a shirt for most of the characters, a regular shirt. 
I think the overcoat for all the characters, uh, and then they have slightly different um, kind of final treatment. Open collar, uh, bow tie, and full tie, regular tie. And they all have the same pants. All right, cool, cool. So, I guess the next step would be merging all this down. Let's get this working better. Again, as I'm happy with things, I up res it so that it gets a little kind of more. I guess the, the term I like to use is a little firmer, right? So it's not as likely to lose its, uh, its shape when I do a smooth all operation or something like that. As you can see there. Um, cool. I'm trying to see if those shoulders seem like too far back, the arms. That uh, should be okay. I might. I think, I think moving it even that much helps a bit, so uh, I'm cool with that. Uh, increase resolution on some of these. And what I'll do is get the chest here. I'm just gonna right click and save volume with subtree as 3B. I'll call this uh, male slim. Zero, zero, 001. Cool. So now I can use that as a uh, as a base for uh, subsequent versions. Cool. Um, all right. So now what I'll do is I could just collapse this whole tree. Uh, so that's everything here, and I can simply um, just make a new layer and right click. Turn the head off. Oh, that neck is long. Right click here and I'll just say uh, merge visible. Again, I can turn this off. Whoops. Not, I didn't have a sufficient resolution on this layer, uh, so that's what's causing me a problem here. So I'll uh, just increase the resolution maybe a few times. To keep a close eye on those fingers, make sure that they don't erode when I do this. Uh, and then again, I should probably set a hotkey for this as well. Uh, merge visible. I don't know what that would be. And maybe shift M. Yeah, that's not assigned to anything. Cool, so that's my merge visible. Uh, you'll see that I still kind of have some issues here. I only have. 500,000 trial triangles here. So I can afford to go higher. I'll increase the resolution one more time. And I think just basically the, based on the way those fingers are, I think I'll probably get them connecting no matter what I try to do. But let's merge that. Okay, so now it's 1.861 million. Uh, and now what I would do at this point is go in with my uh, clay brushes 
uh, potentially in surface mode, um, or I can work in voxel clay, with my voxel clay brushes as well. Continue to kind of like sculpt out the form. This is where it's going to look like more like actual sculpting. Smooth things out. Okay, I'm going to change my shader to matte cap and also turn off my uh, cast shadows. It's just going to be easier for me to kind of make sense of what's actually going on. I'm going to smooth all actually a few times as well. I do have to be careful because uh, I'm probably destroying those fingers and they're probably all kind of clumping together. So things like the fingers I might keep separate for longer um, until I'm ready to, to kind of really detail that part. Yeah, you see how I kind of wrecked them a little bit, uh, which is okay. What I can do in this version is say, just ignore the hands. Because I still have the uh, the source material there, I can always merge back in after the fact. <clears throat> so when there's not, when there's more space between things, we can more safely smooth things out in voxel mode. Um, when we're in surface mode, like you don't have to worry as much. But so uh, when you're in voxel mode, uh, you do things will indiscriminately kind of just bleed, take it, bleed together. Again, I'm adding detail based on what I think I'm actually going to need um, for later. So, I'm trying not to waste time on unnecessary forms and things like that. I might put suggest a bit of a kneecap here.
and assuming I'm happy with uh, with what I'm getting here, uh, then I can go in and uh, add back the hands, uh, and then move out of voxel mode and start kind of going into surface mode to finalize the sculpt. Body is really just kind of there for kind of the placeholder for putting clothes uh, more than anything. So I don't have to worry too, too much. Oops. Okay, so I've got a crash, unfortunately. Uh, but let's uh, reload here. So let's merge those, uh, I was finished, um, where was I? Oh, I was fixing up the ankles here. Let's let's uh, start winding down on this, and let's, let's look at uh, mapping out some some clothes for this character. Let's try to get this these forms as clean as possible. bit of lumpiness there that I, I mean, I'd, I'd rather kind of fix, but um, as I'm thinking about this now, uh, the hands I can always pull from a different model too. Uh, I can just use this for clothing and kind of go from there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump over to Retopo. I will bring up my reference image. I'll dock this somewhere. I'll just dock it maybe here. Let me bring back the head. And, okay, so let's do some uh, 
basic clothing. I will. Uh, I usually use the uh, points to polygons. There's some new, new retopo tools, uh, and I'm not like well versed with them yet, uh, so I can't always get predict predictable results. But they they seem very promising. So for example, uh, I'll try. I'll see what I can do. Um, if I were to go like here, oh, so I have to change the mode here to quadrangulation. If I go like this, oops, change it. Sorry, quadrangulation. Go like this. So that's the part I haven't figured out yet. How do I kind of make a new curve? Hmm. Oh, maybe I just hold control. Okay, maybe that's it. <laughs> All right, so holding control seems to be, or yeah, seems to be working. Um, and so then you see, I can kind of get that result. Uh, what I need to also learn is how do I remove a point? Um, I haven't figured that out either. So these are things I need to to work out um, in order for me to like properly make sense of uh, how to take advantage. But uh, but you get pretty good results. Um, here, but I'd rather I'd like to get rid of this um, extra piece. So this is what I'm trying to find out, but uh, but you can see that uh, if we were to work with something like this, how uh, how helpful it could potentially be, right? So yeah, so that is uh, one of the new retopo tools. Um, I, I haven't figured it out yet, but it, it looks really promising. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, so for my purposes, just because again, I have that familiarity, I have a little more uh, control. I'm just gonna go with um, this guy. figure out what's going on here because I'm expecting symmetry to work but it is not working. Um, it's enabled. Symmetry mesh. 
um, virtual mirror mode. So one thing I've noticed, and I, I'll just double check, uh, if for whatever reason my sculpt there doesn't have, uh, isn't totally symmetrical, sometimes that causes problems. But it looks like it should be okay, uh, so. change there but anyways so what I like to do I uh, want to re retopoing uh, is always work big 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 kind of start big big kind of capture those big shapes and then progressively go uh, smaller. Notice I check at the center like that it, to make just to confirm that it is uh, merged. It's not always kind of merged. It might look like it is, but it's not actually. So I just double check. Move this down instead of making new geometry, just move all these points. Uh, and then I can go in after with my uh, cut loops by holding control and get, uh, get those extra cuts in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven spans. Let's make it a square number. tell me that I have 14 edges selected, so that's good. What I'll do now, I'll get my curves stroke tool, just go into a front view. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, so I'm, I need curves here uh, for this to work, and if my curves tree is not working, you might think that uh, nothing's happening, or if your curves tree is not. Uh, visible you might think nothing is happening this curve strokes tool is also different than I remember so uh, it's using these uh, curves um, some of the functionality that I remember is not here or not uh, I don't know how to kind of access it hmm update auto retopo hmm yeah, I have no idea, to be honest with you. Hmm. Try this one more time. So I go here and here. how this is supposed to work all right so what I'm gonna do is uh, hmm, try to do the best way to approach this oh strokes sorry there's a strokes tool there's a curve strokes tool I don't know how to use the curve strokes I definitely know how to use the strokes tool okay um, so I set this segments number to 14 and I'll just do this 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 like so now I'm going to press enter that I get these uh, nice uh, sleeves that I can work with uh, and then I should be able to go to select select these edge loop and select this edge loop and bridge these did not copy over to the other side I'm just gonna hit this here be careful uh, my mirror snapping is too high uh, so now I have two sleeves and um, yeah so what I'm gonna do I uh, might have to go into the modeling tab later but let's call this shirt Let's move over to the modeling tab. Select the edge loop. And transform it. Move it down.
scale it down a little bit more. And again, there is that tweak mode. I might enable that. Uh, let's see. Tweak. Moving screen space. <clears throat> I'll see if I can set this to Q. Yeah, set that to Q. If I can hide the gizmo, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Awesome. This is actually pretty helpful. I think an easier way to drop selection would be cool, like if if there's an option to auto drop when I select something new. Uh, I wonder if that's an option. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I can kind of continue with this and just uh, select points. Oops, don't want to select that one. Start speaking to the form. Uh, and actually what I probably would, sh should do, and will maybe do, is uh, back up and um, Possibly look at simplifying the geometry first, uh, and then kind of going in after uh, to speak to the to the forms and, and shapes and things like that. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna select this edge. See if there's a smooth. So this is where I'm like a little bit out of my depth. Like I, I don't. These tools are all new, and I haven't really used them a lot yet. Um, I could probably jump over to Blender to do a bunch of this stuff, or um, if I was feeling more ambitious, maybe try a marvelous designer. Uh, let's relax this. So I keep for this control shift R. Very cool. Control T. To say it's actually pretty useful. I was skeptical as to you know how useful modeling would be, um, or being able to work with like a in a modeling workspace would be, but uh, it actually is not too bad. I think selecting, deselecting needs to be faster. But um, made more automated, I should say. Uh, so you should be able to select at any moment. Like you shouldn't have to switch to a select tool to be able to select something. <clears throat> like I should be able to hold down the control key, for example, and, uh, and select something. But through using it, I'll maybe 
continue to find workflow ideas and make suggestions to the uh, development team. Or it would be even cooler if I could hover over something and while it's still highlighted, I could move it, you know? Um, I think that would be also a, a time saver. Uh, and I will have to ultimately look at some reference on collared shirts to, to make sure that I do this properly. I could um, turn this into the, to the sweater vest thing or that vest uh, as well. Um, I could always duplicate it as well and do that. But anyways, I, I have to wrap today. Uh, but I did uh, create a base character um, body shape that I can use for future future characters and concepts. So that is uh, it for today, guys. Hopefully that was helpful, um, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, take care. Bye.